Another Dog Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. We have, you know, just amazing guests. And today, Tamia is going to talk to us about how she goes throughout her life journey as a child of God, walking in faith with God and letting him take control, let him, letting him, you know, continuously keep his purpose through her. You know, she's an author at 22. She's out here spreading God's word. So I'm going to let her tell us a little bit about herself and her books. Wow. Well, first, I want to say thank you so much for that great introduction about me. And it's, yeah, it's really amazing. You know, everything I always say, I give God the glory for because actually I'm 23. So thank you so much. I'm 23 years old. That's good. That's fine. I like the, you know, one year age younger. So it makes me feel good. (laughs) But even when you mentioned that, I was like, wow, I'm 23. I'm young and I'm doing so much great things. And it's only God. Like, it's really only God. And as she stated before, I'm an author of four books. I published, self-published three books this year. And it will be on, yeah, it will be coming out. It's called Life is a 15-Round Boxing Championship, The Notebook for It, and Write the Vision Journal. Last year, I published, well, Felicia Archer published, helped me with the process of publishing my book, Young and Believe in God. And yeah. I'm an author. I'm a resilient life coach as well. And I'm also an author coach too. I'm a nursing student and I'm just thankful, very humble and thankful for the, for the little things that God is doing in my life and he's making it big for his purpose. Oh, I think your, your mic is off. (laughs) That's fine. (laughs) That's fine. I literally, y'all, She's definitely more put together than I am. Let me just tell you. She is. And (sighs) talking about, you know, fighting battles, boxing. I'm boxing right now with my mind because this is absolutely crazy. I forgot my AirPods. Um, But thank you for that great introduction. Um, But no... Actually, I'm very curious, how did that writing process work? Like, how, like, did you, did you feel it? Like, I don't, and I always ask this question because I, that's one of the biggest things I have a, I have trouble with is like, how do people feel their faith? How do they, like, feel God moving in them when they write? when they talk to people, like, I feel like, I feel when he moves things, but not necessarily like when he speaks through me. Mm. I don't know if that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I would say in the writing process, I let it, let things flow. Now being very transparent, because I'm a very honest person, I overthink a lot. So (laughs) I overthink just being honest. And even with me being a person, I'm working on it, even with me being a person that overthinks sometimes in the writing process, I had to let God have his way, meaning just flow, just be honest, just be transparent and write my story. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me. You know, I, I'm, I can't be selfish. I have to be selfless. And with my first book, I realized just me being open was really helping a lot of people. You know, because a lot of people think that believers don't have a story, like they haven't been through anything. But when I was honest and open, people was able to relate to me. So one of the things Holy Spirit always show me is that tell your story, be open, be honest. And when I was transferring, it was even blessing me at that moment. I was like, whoa, like I needed to hear this too. (laughs) So I would always tell others, let it flow. You know, be yourself, let it flow. God created you as that particular person, your identity, who you are is for a reason. So just be yourself. Oh, goodness. I, uh, I think that's hard. I, and I think what you said was really like, was really comforting because a lot of people don't think of it as flowing, but they think of Christianity as this act, like Mm -hmm. this, this facade that you have to put on not only for yourself, but for those around you. It's like this, this space where you feel as if you can't surrender at all. 
you have to you have to be holier than thou to be holy and Jesus himself was didn't feel as if he was holier than thou to be holy because he was he wept he had friends he had friends who you know wasn't the greatest he had people around him following him and even though they saw him as this holier than thou that was shown just through him being open and through him being accessible to everyone and willing to have those conversations with people and so i think people have this misconception and it's weird because we we end up becoming closer to pharisees than to jesus wow and i don't that's know <laughs> what? that's good <laughs> um but no because like and i i did it i honestly i can say i did it because when you're around people, you want you want to help them get closer to God by you know spewing scripture out and and yeah. letting letting them know that you you know your word and stuff like that. But but helping them get closer to God is just really helping them through your kindness, helping them through your love, helping them through telling them you know yeah I don't have it all together, but we could get it together in Christ. Like, and I think for people that's what like your book this podcast it's all about is showing that journey showing that you know everything isn't perfect but we know who is god and that's why we rely on him consistently so i'm so happy that you said that i'm listen i was even blessed by what you said because i remember i posted something similar to that and certain people you reach certain people with different ways in other words you can't just always throw the Bible at them. We understand, we know the word, but you can't just be like, Bible, 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 Bible. <laughs> Some people know for real. Some people approach it different. And one of the things about Jesus, what I love about him is the fact that he understands our human nature. Like, it's simple as a woman with the issue of blood. And for example, some person may not just want Bible at the moment. They may just want you to listen to them. They going through some people would just want to encourage your word. Listen, some people might be like, hey, I want you to take me out for lunch. Like, I'm not in for all that right now. Just take me out for lunch, something, hear me out. And <laughs> even in those moments, you find where when people understand that, hey, you're not quickly to judge, but understand them, they see the light throughout your light because you're able to just be by their side. Some people just want to listen and air. And I, re- I honestly, I love, and I respect that you said that we're not taking the word away. The word is in us and we speak it. But at the end of the day, as believers, we have to learn different approach when it comes to reaching souls and reaching people for the kingdom of God. So I really appreciate that you said that. And like, I don't even see it as um, I don't see it as not using the word because we're using it. I'm, it's, it's, it's not even just in us. We're applying it. It's through God said, or even th- through his son, Jesus said, those who you gave food to when they didn't have food, you did to me. So if that's the case, then the word is what I'm doing. If I'm giving you food, if I'm taking you out to lunch, that's the word right there. That's the word true. is connecting us. It's connecting us. So take that person up for lunch today, y'all. If, he doesn't, <laughs> if she doesn't know Christ, take them out for lunch today because you don't, you really don't know if they don't have it or if they just, sometimes people need just to feel loved and just to feel like someone cares. And if your words aren't enough, then put, put, put that action. And if you don't have that money to cook, I mean, not to cook. If you don't have money to take them out, cook. Bring them that little box, that little lunch box, and say, here, I thought about you today. Oh, <laughs> but if you can't cook, yeah, don't do it to them. But so, yeah, that's it's crazy that you brought that up because it just, it just, it always hits you and you don't really know it that it hits you until you're like, hmm, was I just putting scripture on them or was I actually showing them and so it's and then sometimes for a lot of people it's easier to say than to do yeah that's true so i mean if you're not willing to pick up your cross and actually act and you're just saying scripture then i don't know 
I'm I can't speak for it, but I don't know where that's gonna get you. Yeah. Because Paul Paul didn't just spread the word; he was in the word, he acted out the word, he applied the word, yeah. and so that's very important. It's like God is not; he's not looking for so much of the religion aspect. He's looking for relationship, and that's how I think about it. Yeah, that's good. That was good. Um. Do you see your business as a job or a mission? And the reason why this question is asked, because I just feel like it's like vital to hear people's perspectives on, you know, mixing like money and because obviously it's a profit or not profit, but yeah, I think that's how that works. Yeah. But it's weird because some people see it today as, or I've seen a lot of articles where they've seen like Christians that profit off of christianity but don't doesn't have the aim but i think god still uses them so i guess that's a two-part question (laughs) but the first question is do you see this as a business or as a mission well being very honest i see i see it as a mission however i also see it as one where you can also gain well too now the mission part is a mission because when I write my story and I, you know, my books come out, I know it's a mission for God's glory because persons are either being transformed, healed, encouraged, helped throughout my story. And not only that, when it comes to the part of, you know, gaining from it, I don't think and I don't believe God calls us in this kingdom to be people that suffering and poverty and doing bad at the end of the day he calls us royal priesthood he calls us his chosen vessel he call he wants us to gain and benefit from certain things but at the end of the day is how you're using it so i would say for me personally i know it's for god's glory it's to help people but if i'm also gaining from it financially then i see it as it's okay but that's not my purpose that's not my aim and then so when i do certain things I don't look like I really, I don't look to gain from it, but God would open doors to help me just by me being a humble vessel. Um, So that's what I would say. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Honestly, it's crazy how many different answers you would get about this question, but I love the use of a humble vessel. And I love the fact that you mentioned that God didn't want to see us poor because I'm happy that you said that which some people might you know I don't know like I just I know some people are like oh I was called to do this but I was not called to do ministry in an impoverished community and so I'm like I'm always like torn about it because I'm like well maybe when I see a church they have like this um mission trip maybe I should go and but then I'm like, hmm, I I really don't know. So what is your perspective on that piece? Those that are called to be like in those impoverished communities. Well, OK, so for me personally, I was brought up in an area called Bay Town, um, just being honest. And it's only like I <laughs> like when I say a humble vessel. And God just used me through my different experience. You have, I also tell people you really have to humble yourself. Like that, I feel like those areas are the areas where most impact is made. So if you are a believer and you don't want to go in certain areas that really need you, then I see it as a place of, okay, some people have failed. Okay, I don't want to go in this area because I don't want anything to happen to me. But God is with you. He's protecting you. So even Jesus, one of the things I love about him is that he he went through the highest, the lowest, the middle class, diff, all different levels. So if we are resembling him and we look like him and we don't want to go to a low area that actually needs you, then are you really representing God? That That's how I see it. Like, are you really representing him? So we have to come to the place where we really have to humble yourself. And I've seen so much impact 
and God's glory being shined through those type of areas when we really allow God to use us because they're the areas that really need us. Wow. I, that, that is, that was really good because then I think, well, speaking, I, I don't know what well, for the Bahamians out there listening to this podcast. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Fox Hill. So, but I don't know if it was like the bad part of Fox Hill. I, I mean, I'm not going to say that it was a great part. Like it wasn't like the life for key, but <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't no, it wasn't me living out West or over Paradise Island. So I definitely would say, it was tough, like, you know, but I still recognize, like, you know, where I did grow up different. So if anybody know I went to SAC, I don't, I mean, I don't see the whole big deal about the whole feud between schools or whatever, but um, I think it's also hard for some Christians to just acknowledge, like, the, the fact that they have privilege or they, they didn't grow up like as hard as they could have. And so getting into that impoverished community isn't, I mean, whether you're there for the season or the rest of your life, the fact that you're there means that you have a greater purpose. So I love that. Yeah. Um, so my next question is, what do you think is like your, and I know you talked about this um, briefly, but what do you think is your over, like your overwhelming purpose with your books and if possible, sneak peeks to any new ones with a, <laughs> with a different purpose than you um, discussed. Okay, repeat that question one more time. Oh, sorry. I know it was long-winded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I'll just ask it in parts. So, one, what was the purpose of each book? Like, what do you think was the overwhelming purpose of each book? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first book, Young and Believing God, um, God really placed that on my heart, especially for young people, because my story, when I, before I was into it, I had a story, you know, I was living the life of following the crowd, you know, young people, we want to party, we want to have fun. And then God, eventually me building my, finding God for myself, because I didn't find God in a church setting. Honestly, I found God in my room. That's where I found him. And me understanding what it is to build a relationship with God, God was like, I want you to write your story. And I want you to speak to the young people because they're going to understand you. They're going to feel where you're coming at. Because the truth is you have some young people who still battling with that type of lifestyle. They're still drinking, they're still partying, they're still having fun. And the purpose of that, so that first book is to tell the young people, listen, God loves you. He cares. But we have to get to that place where we have to surrender to him. And if we could find God in our youths, that's what the Bible says, find God in your youths. If we could find him in your youths, imagine when we get older, how beautiful that would be. You know, that don't mean we wouldn't have challenges. We would. But it makes it more beneficial when you find him from your young age. The next book, you know, I have, well, I have Write the Vision Journal. And God gave me that particular journal when I was at work, I remember saying, God, you know, I need something different. Like I, I don't, I like to be creative. I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I need and I remember Holy Spirit was like, write the vision journal because I'm a person of vision. And he was like, write, do a journal where persons can, because how about the two first was powerful. As simple as you writing the vision plan, God would make that come to pass. And that journal is like a guide to show people, listen, these are some questions. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Or what about your health? Or what about your family, your relationship? Write it down. What do you see? And when you write it down, you pray over it. God is going to lead the way. My whole life with things, great things happen in my life is because I wrote it down. In my journal, God, I want to write a book. Simple, just like that. God, I want to do this. And whatever he placed on the size of my heart, according to his will, it came to pass just by writing it down. The third one is life is a 15 round boxing ring championship. And that particular book came about when my grandpa, he is Dr. James Sheriff. He is one that always encourages me and speak wisdom in my life. Because, you know, people always say to older people, they, they give you a lot of wisdom. 
Okay, so I like to hang around my grandparents to gain from what they learn. And I remember he told me this. He was like, darling, life is a 15-round boxing ring championship. In this journey as believers, we are going to go through. That's just the truth. We, you know, we don't like to accept it, but we will deal with challenges. You'll deal with persecution, people talking about you. You might even go through, I don't want to speak it, but you might even go through a whole divorce or you may lose your job. You know, simple things like that. But the truth is, as believers, we are overcomers. Why? Because it's like, I vision it like a boxing ring. You know, you fighting 15 rounds. But at the end of the day, it's the last round that matters. You may lose all 14 rounds, just saying, just knocking you, knocking you, knocking you, knocking you. But it's the last round that matters. And at the end of the day, when we put God first, that last round, we're going to win the fight. And that's the point of the book to say, listen, you go through, we, we go through challenges, but at the end of the day, when we put God first, we win this fight. We win this battle. You going through depression, keep getting back up. You going through anxiety, keep going. Because even with my story, I went through anxiety. I had a phase when I would never think, I mean, I don't want to say never, but I had that phase when I dealt with that. I dealt with depression. I dealt with anxiety, but it's literally, and I was like, God. My book talk about it. How can I be a believer going through anxiety? I preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel, spreading the gospel, and I going through anxiety? Like that's mental health. Like just being honest. And with that journey, God helped me to overcome anxiety. And it reminds me of the verse, the race not for the swift, but for those who endure it to the end. So the point of the book is to tell believers, listen, we going through a fight. But keep on enduring, keep on pushing, because in the end, we are going to win this fight, this battle with us and Satan. We win at the end of the day. Like Ja'Kaelin Kerr, I love her so much. Her song, you'll win. And the truth is, we will win. So, yeah. Oh, I thought I had to unmute again, but I didn't. Um, okay. But <laughs> that was so, like, so good, because, I mean, as a person who... I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder when I graduated high school. And I knew like I had like there was something that was not wrong, like mentally. But I knew like there was there's, there's no reason that my arm should be shaking in the middle of the day for no reason. Like there yeah. is no reason why I am like overthinking into 20 years. Like I I tell people this all the time. I'm still following the, the plan. And I don't know if God like just put this plan on me when I was 12. I remember it clear as day, 12 years old. <laughs> um, Yamakura Beach, just looking up at the sky. And I was just like, yeah, this is this is how I'm gonna lay out my life. And weirdly enough, here I am, like literally year by year by year, I am living it. And so I'm just like. Either I was really just overthinking that day and I'm still like overthinking it now or like God really like put that on my life. I mean, the podcast was never in the picture, but it became a part of the picture and then it just became what it is. And so I think a lot of people, I mean, even though I still suffer with it today, it's like it's, it's, in it's, well, some people say a disorder, some people say illness, some people say a syndrome, but yeah despite all of that, I still get the power from him to get up and do this because with depression, like you really don't know, like when you want to get up, you don't know when you want to see the light of day. And I, I have had like many weeks where I just stayed in my room and just looked outside. I was like, not today. So go to sleep. <laughs> like I honestly, I would be like, not even sleeping. I would just be awake. And you would just be awake and you'd be sitting in this darkness and you're just like, yeah, not today, not today, not today. I won't today. I won't leave my room today. I won't do anything today. You forget to eat. You get to sleep. You forget no water. Like, it's just, it's all bad. And then you're looking around like no one's checking up on me. No one loves me. No one cares about me. No one, is, no one has noticed that I've been in this yeah. room for days. And so then you're just like that thought of giving up mid battle just just whooshes over you when you're like what am I supposed to do should I give it all up if no one cares if I don't care why why should anyone care and then 
the answer is because God cares, because Jesus cares, because Jesus loves you. And amidst that darkness, I completely forgot that he was lying in the bed right next to me. Yeah. And so um, that's just like super important. And like even now, like giving up, it, it always crosses my mind. And I love to say it because it it doesn't make me bad. Like it doesn't make like I currently in the podcast, we're going through um Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. And Moses was giving up every step of the way. Moses was yeah. like, Yeah. He was like, These Israelites, Lord, this is not my responsibility. I don't know why I'm here. Like this, like Moses was literally, and he is like re- revered for splitting the, 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 the seas and guiding the Israelites and doing this and the next. He didn't even see the promised land. But yeah. like you have to look at it like even these people that God, God had a face to face relationship with. God said that Moses is my literal friend. Moses was convincing God to do things. And I'm just like, and this guy still gave up every step of the way. Uh, yeah god knows us he knows that we're going to hit a, a section in our lives where we repeatedly are going through what he's he's using to refine us and he's like i know you want to give up yeah but keep going keep going yeah. and so i i i love that your book is centered around that because i think a lot of people don't really talk about the fact that you want to give up daily but the fact yeah. that you're getting up every day means that you haven't given up. And the fact that you're yeah. consistently moving, despite having those thoughts in your head to give mm-hmm. up, means that you're you're doing better than anyone can ask of you. Yeah. I you always know. say that though, when you the fact that we get up means we have purpose. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that helped me too, because the same way how you went through that season of, you know, we had a depression, you were in your room. Or whatever, when I was going through anxiety, I was locked up in my room too. But at some point, like I had to say, you know what? I'm not gonna settle in this place. I'm not gonna stay here. And it's a journey. Shoots, yeah. I went through that more than a whole month during the season. That was probably like two or three months I was going through that. And some people the thing about it is I feel as as believers that comes to this um the part of learning relationship rather than always spitting word. At some place we have to really pay attention and understand people because when I was going through that phase, nobody really did know until I say it. So yeah. it's like, are we really paying attention to people? Not just, okay, they are a believer because some of the strongest people are the ones who are really going through. But I would say what helped me during that time of anxiety, my book talks about it, is the fact that, yeah, I was reading my word. Yeah, I was worshiping. I love it. I was doing that. But I had to learn how to find breaks. I had to learn how to go on the beach. I had to learn how to spend time with my family, my loved ones, just talk, relationship. And them pouring into me and as simple as to me, I care for you, I love you, everything's going to be okay. And this would honestly help me even up to this day. Because there are moments I want to give up to, I'm a nurse, so it is rough out here. <laughs> it's rough. But I practice this and I listen to E.T. He is a... E.T. the preacher. He mm-hmm. is a motivational speaker. And when I came on this podcast, he was like, I listened to his YouTube and he was like, say, I can, I will, I must. There is so much power when you make declarations like today will be a great day. I will win. I will overcome. Life is good and life is getting better. My favorite declaration is my past is my past and my future shall be greater. When I speak those things over, over my life, even when I don't feel it, eventually I see it happen. So anyone that going through depression and anxiety right now, I would tell them, give it over to God. Some of us give it over to God, but know that God cares. Like he cares about you going through that deep darkness, even when nobody see it and he loves you. And always remember that this, my father always tell me this, this too shall pass. Like you may feel like, okay, I have anxiety forever. No, I don't settle for that. You don't have anxiety forever. You don't have depression forever. That too will pass because the truth is what I know about my God. He is a healer. Even when I was going through that phase of anxiety, I felt like maybe I can't be healed. But I trust him saying, you know what? This might feel long. Then This might be months or even a very long period. But I know he will heal me. So we have to start in our mind and trust God and know that he would do it for you. He cares. So, yeah. <laughs> 
I and thinking about like like you talking about like family and like people who don't notice it's really tough in Bahamian culture when mental health yeah. mental health is not a thing That's and true. so and even with even with I would say like Christianity or not even Christianity religion in itself um people forget that yes your god is a healer but you have to have faith yeah and so at the end of the day when i'm telling you or when i'm telling whoever that hey or if you see me and you're like hey you're i'm down i'm just i'm roughing it right now i need some help this is that the next they'll be like oh well all you need to do is all you need to do is pray okay <laughs> that's that's all i need which that's the greatest foundation to start that 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 part with but then when you look at when you look at people who are healed right let's go to the lady the lady who had the blood problem 12 years she'd been going to everybody but at the end of the day she first she was praying but look at how much work she had to do just to get to the hem she had to fight wow. through crowds of people she had to she had to get past the disciples she had to and if you only could cleave a hem that means you was you was scratching close yeah and so people think that or people around us back home they would tell you oh just pray about it no you have to pray about it be about it and work towards it yeah. and so it's it's hard when you consistently hear that because that's all I heard. That's all I heard. Just pray about it. And I'm praying. I'm like, what's next? What do I do in this intermediate in, intermediate time? And honestly, the things that you do is create a better space, create a better environment, um, work, work towards, like you said, talking to yourself and uplifting yourself more. Say things that you know God would want you to hear. Be around people that God would want you to be around. And slowly you will see God's healing start to just dwell into you. And so it's it's working. Everything that we have to do, like they say, faith without works is super dead. And um, last, I think a few weeks ago, we uh, me and a guest Rocio was talking about the fact that prosperity gospel is like literally teaching you that just having faith is enough. It's not, an, it's not, it's just not enough. You need to work. You need to put in yeah. the work. And as we can see, Tomia knows all about that work because writing <laughs> books is, <laughs> let me just tell you, it's hard work. It's very hard work. I can tell you it's very hard work. Um, but with speaking into like just writing and that process, how do you define the success of your books? Is it by feedback? Is it, you know, just, just letting it go and hoping that it flies to the right people? I would say it's both, you know, um, well, the most of it is feedback. That's what I realized. Well, <laughs> majority, well, my first book was that I got a lot of feedback, you know, with people who said they was going through and, as simple as saying to me, I always say, listen, don't thank me. Thank God. But as simple as someone saying to me, thank you, your book helped me. Really, that that's all that matters because that was the point of it. But yeah, getting it to the right people is good too because that open source for opportunity. Like right now, this is an opportunity. Like, thank you so much. This is an opportunity oh. right now. <laughs> so I would say personally, it's, it's both feedback, and also it hitting the right person. Um, yeah, for God's glory. Um, and the thing is, I feel like the reason why I resonate like so much with your story is because I noticed you focus a lot of the, on the journey. And yeah. definitely like our logo is the cog. And I know it's weird because a lot of a lot of people don't know what a cog is. And I realize I've never really truly explained it, but I'll take this time. And so a cog. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know was like it's like a small like this little tiny mechanical thing that goes into a machine like it's literally the lowest of the low probably like no wires it's just it just consistently spinning like consistently turning right and so I kind of resonated that with one because it perfectly fit which is weird because I was just like, I was like, what am I going to name this podcast? Child of God podcast. Great. Awesome. I'm a child of God. Woo woo. Which God kind of spoke to me for like a whole year and I was ignoring it. 
So great mm-hmm. job for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I was like, what does that spell? It spells a cog. And then I was just like, well, what, 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 what is exactly a cog? And I watch a lot of anime and I realized, and I saw it like one day and it was just like, a cog is like this little spinny thingy. But what I realized is if one cog is off, the machine stops working. If one thing is interrupting that tiny, that minuscule part of the process, then everything goes in a disarray. And so I wonder if we think of ourselves as cogs, which I definitely do now because it's my whole podcast and brand, but <laughs> um, do we think of ourselves as this, this mechanism in this greater machine of spreading God's love and word around the world? As children of God, we're each an important cog that we need. God needs you and he needs me. And of course, like a cog, the journey is like straights and jags, like just trials, tribulations and everything in between. And so it was so important to capture that journey and just knowing that obviously there are people out there, but knowing that there's someone just as close in age who thinks that it's so important to capture that journey is absolutely important. And it's one of my favorite things about this podcast is just learning um, the different journeys that everyone else goes through. And so I know you mentioned finding, finding God in your room. What, what other steps did you take after you found him there? That's a very good question. Um, one of the things I realized with my journey too, was that God brought people in my life that helped me too. So there are people who I look up to and they was even in high school, they were on fire for God. And I was like, I want to get to that place. So I realized that about God too. He sends help. So yes, you can find him in your room, but he sends community. He sends help. He sends the right people. Like you mentioned, you need to be around the right people if you want to grow. That's just the truth about it. But he sent people in my life that helped me to grow. Um, to get to the place where I'm at, I'm at right now. I, I didn't, listen, no man is an island. You can't do it by yourself. You really can't. But he sent people, his word, yes, his word. Yes, me friend. Yes, me spending time with him. But it was people too that always remind me, hey, to me, you're doing a great job. Hey, to me, keep pushing. Even currently now, I have people that say, hey, to me, I'm proud of you. Hey, to me, you know, I appreciate you. Stuff like that. Keep letting your light shine. God would send the right people if you pray to him in your life to help you on this right journey because we can't do it by ourselves. So yes, I spent time with him, but it was also people in, along my journey too. Yeah, I like I've always had a problem with people. I don't I don't know. Well, not with people, <laughs> not with people, but no, I've always I've always had a problem with finding I should say my right crowd of people, mm-hmm. and. I know one of the things that I, I knew just came with with Christianity or even being with faith or even being a child of God in your area, you might go through a very long, a very long period of separation and yeah. pruning and refinement. And so all throughout my high school, like all throughout my life, actually, I've never had like a group of friends like I, I would be so jealous that everybody and yes guys I did say jealous but I would be like I'm (laughs) honest like I would be so jealous of everybody that I see and they're going out to brunch and they're eating good food and I do those things but I do them by myself so it's weird so (laughs) I'm just like God God, when is it my time like when are my people gonna find me now here's the thing yeah what you said good here's the thing about it when I mentioned people I mean, it's just one or two persons. Mm-hmm. That people sound like a big crowd. But I no, I don't, you know, little three or four. You know, someone you could go on That's a trip it. to Cancun it, with. It's literally small. I just was talking to a very great person on my Saturday who was encouraging me. And mm-hmm. I, I was like, listen, my circle is small. Like, it's really small. But one of the things I love about Jesus is the fact that he had, he had two disciples with him. He had a 10 disciples around him, but two, he shared the most too. Mm-hmm. And we always, as even not just believers, but people on the whole, we want a big crowd to feel important. But the truth is you don't need, you just, you may just need one. And not one person is a whole big crowd. That one mm-hmm. person understand you. So even with that, you have to trust the time and the God because 
in high school, there are moments when I felt alone. I felt like I couldn't fit in. I felt different. I felt like something was something wrong with me. Like mm-hmm. why when I fit with someone, it's all, or I feel in a certain way, or they don't feel a certain way. We're not connecting like that. And I had to pray constantly, God, send the right people in my life, send the right people. It took years, even up to this day, I may still feel off or feel like I'm not fitting in, even when I'm around certain people. But when you're, when I see this about God, when he has a purpose for your life, you can fit with everybody. And I want to tell you, it's okay. Like, it's okay if you feel like you can't fit. Maybe God is preparing the right person for you who would understand you who would understand your journey who would understand what you've been through and with that just know his timing is perfect his timing is perfect and you can meet someone who treats you better than someone who you didn't know for years because of the time and the gone you just meet them and it's like whoa where have you been all of your whole life like where have you been so with that trust the time and the god he would send every each and every one of us have at least one person that is designed for God too, or one person that is designed for future and purpose for our life. But there's yeah. a time, there's a season and time for it. So if they in hell, just know they come in. Just trust Hopefully. this time and keep working on you. I want them to be here before like I get married so I could at least have some bridesmaids. Hi, <laughs> um. <laughs> it's looking a little rocky on this side. <laughs> it's looking a little rocky. But no, that was actually that was like really good encouragement because I was just like, well, because I always I always found myself like near someone. But I wonder if God was like, stop. He's like, stop it. Like, just stay. Because like when I went searching for friends, it was not the right people. It was not the right crowd. It, and the reason why, like, I think it's also crucial with us having a purpose and everybody has a purpose, but yeah. sometimes God literally is like, if I leave it up to you, you're going to go find the most crazy friends that you could have when I need you to have friends that will help you build up what I've designed you to do. Wow, and so I was just like, okay, well, then can we can we send them because this little content great and stuff get a little tough. <laughs> and it's just like you it's just so much things that you have to go through before you get to that point and I realized that it's just a it's a very I think I'm in the season of humbling I think I'm in a season of like you have to work super hard now so that when it actually is time for you to relax you won't have nothing you won't need to do nothing I'll just take full control of it like I but you'll need to build you need to build this ground you need to do what you have to do and what I need you to do right now, like throw everything out, else out, all those other exit stuff you can do later. This is what I yeah. need you to do right now. And I think maybe that's why I don't have any friends because, or I don't, why well, I don't have any, like, I guess, Christian or like solely into that purpose group friends, because it's, it's time for me to just focus on this myself before I start yeah. relying on anybody else, but God. Wow. I love so. No, you can like it, but I literally got some inspiration from you out there. So <laughs> it's 50 50 right now. You definitely, I was like, to me, it's oh, spice it. Spice my face. <laughs> um, anyway, but last question. Actually, no, second to last question. Um, okay. What is your day to day life routine with God? I love that too. So for me personally, I believe in having a relationship with God and spending time with them. Um, I work. So obviously I work a long shift. So I have to like place God in the midst of my life. Like I have to. And one of the things about me, I realize this about me. God be on my mind constantly. Like when I wake up, he on my mind. Like I have to think about him throughout the day, not saying that. I'm making this like a schedule, like, okay, stay on my mind. No, he is there because I care. Like I need him. I am literally nothing without God. So when I wake up, the first thing I do is like pray and just talk to him and just ask him to lead my day. And I'm a word person. I love spending time in the word of God. So even if I read the word once or twice a day, the first thing I do every morning is pray and read the word. And Throughout the day, I would have a conversation with him. If I'm working, 
I would say a little prayer, like, Father, keep me or God, guide me, lead me. Just talk with him. And that's me building my relationship with him. Just talking to him, praying and spending time with him every day, consistently. Because the Bible says you have to seek God with all diligence. You know it's diligent? When you're diligent, you persevere and hard work, diligent. Being diligent means hard work. Like when I read that two days ago, I was like, wow, God, I really got to put in my, put in my work. Like you said, you got to put in my work. So I love God. So I'm going to spend time with him. I'm going to keep him on my mind. And I'm just going to say, God, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying my best. And that's all I want you to understand. And he understands. He really do. I literally, while we be um, talking about daily routines with God, I'd be writing notes because I like like mental notes because honestly, I always have a hard time figuring out what that looks like. Yeah. And I know there are a lot of people out there like me that has a hard time figuring out what that looks like because you're just like, how do I, how do I spend, how do I read my word every day? And especially on those days when you're not on fire, like, I yeah. see, uh, I go to church and I see these people and I'm like, they're always on fire for God. Like, how do I, how do I keep that fire burning? But if we're being genuinely honest, that fire does not burn all the time. Yeah. That yeah. fire definitely leaves my soul. And I, you have to consistently rekindle. Like you literally like would match and rocks and you're like, let's go. Let's keep, <laughs> let's try, let's keep trying. And so definitely not and I think about it like how you were talking about it I think it's really important to view it that way because then if I don't view it that way as like me consistently talking with God and I look at it I look at it as oh darn I missed my I missed my scripture today I failed like no that's 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 okay because at the end of the day you still talk to him you still pray to him. You still rely on him. You're still talking to him like it was a relationship. And I was just like, okay, that that makes a lot of sense that I like that I do that because then, like like we mentioned earlier, like talking in scripture is good, but maybe practicing talking to God is practicing how we're gonna bring people closer to Him. Wow, I love that. So I'm like it. Um literally you're inspiring me i'm used to honestly let's just say i love what you're saying because it literally like inspires me to think about these things and i think that's why it's so important for children of god to come together because you don't know what you could be thinking about unless you hear it from a different perspective and so the one that's huge um two is just when you think of day-to-day life you don't you don't read people all day and so now that I'm thinking about it it's just like if God well God does want a relationship with us and so me just reading and thinking that okay this is enough yeah but am I applying that scripture what's more important I feel like sometimes is like reading a verse maybe at the beginning of the week maybe for three days just trying to apply that into your life reading through proverbs and seeing you can find like something that you need to work on and then saying well you know what this is the verse of the week how can i apply this to whoever i see whoever i meet whoever i um have encountered how can i express kindness to someone this week simple things like that i think are still working diligently because you're putting what you've learned in the scripture to action and so Thank you. Thank you for that perspective. Because I, I never thought that. about that. Huh? It just sounds good. Um, listen, I'm learning from you and you learning from me. So it's like, <laughs> I am sharpening I am right now. So that was always really- And that's what happens when we all when we all come together. And, you know, I love for everybody to come together and just have like a big list. Like, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> um, but. So the last and like to me always is the most important question. If there is someone or there, I know there's someone out there that knows God or wants to know God, what would you say is the first thing that they should do? What is the first um, or not even the first, but who should they reach out to? What should they do so that they can get closer to them? What is one 
this is multiple questions, but this is the most important one. What is one thing that you would advise them to do so that they can get to know God better? Wow. Um, so as you were speaking, because um, I have been, I had to learn this whole my life journey too. When I wasn't say is that I would encourage them not to turn their back against God. When I say that, sometimes when we're in a, let's say in the world, we persons tend to run away from God rather than coming to God. It's like He already know everything. What are you, what you hiding for? You know. So. I would always encourage people, listen, you fall, you fail, you made, made a mistake, whatever it is, go back to him. He, he don't want you to run away from him. He already seen all the horrible things you've already done. Maybe you haven't repented and give your life to Christ because you were shame. I had a person that came to me one day and they was like, Tamia, I want to give my life to Christ, but it's hard. It's like, I don't want to fail God. I don't want to make him shame or I, I'm ashamed to go to him. And I'm like, Go to him. He already know. He already know your failures. He already know your mistake. He just waiting on you to come to him. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So it's like, sometimes we waiting on God to come to us and he like, son and daughter, come to me. I care. I'm looking for the lost. I like, I care about the lost sheep. You know, the word say, God, he wasn't, because he already know the persons were saved. He wasn't looking for the ones who saved. Like you already helped me. Why, why am I, all about checking and mind you, I care, but why am I checking most importantly about you? I'm caring for the ones who are lost. They're my concern. So I would tell persons, listen, God already knows. Just go to him, but don't turn your back against God. Whatever it is that you may, you listen, we can keep it real. If you're struggling with uh, drug abuse, um, smoking or, or drink, partying, whatever it is, Let's be real. Homosexuality, whatever it is, go to God. He cares. And when you go to him and confess, it's like the journey would be, it would just flow. He would prune you. It, it's going to be rough. It's going to be some, it going to hurt sometimes. Like, God, why? But just know it's necessary. So don't turn your back against God. That's my encouragement for those that want to know about this Jesus or get to know him. Go close to him. He knows. He ready. You know everything everything so that's my encouragement that was absolutely an amazing encouragement um and so that is officially the end of our podcast episode i wish we could like do this for hours and hours but i'm not joe rogan and so i would like to give to me this time just you know to share where you can access her on um where to find her books, all of that information. So everything is just simple. To me, a share on Facebook, to me, a share on Instagram, to me, a share on YouTube, to me, a share on TikTok. <laughs> T-O-M-I-A is my first name, last name, S-H-E-A-R-E-R. And my books is available on Amazon. You could type in my name and it will pop up. Um, but if you don't see it, if you type in my name, it's the first book is Young and Believing God. And then the second one is Life is a 15 round boxing ring championship. Also, the notebook for it and write the vision journal. And that's basically it. And listen, if anyone, I always say this if anyone needs encouragement or they need someone to just talk to, my chat is open. Like, it's open. So, yeah. Awesome sauce. I don't want to go on another tangent, but I just want to say a lot of, a lot of, uh christian content creators or like even like people i reach out to to interview and have these conversations with they are very like super closed off or they don't like they feel like they have already gotten so far up there that they don't have to take time to you know interview with people and talk to them about their journey and so i just want to say i really appreciate you and also appreciate the fact that you said that like your chat is open because you know it's very important to have that there because you can't be a resource if they can't access you so (laughs) thank you um but she shared um also have all of those things like in you know guys the little bar that pops up throughout the podcast and at this point sometime and so that's important don't forget to like follow and subscribe 
to the COG podcast yeah. because I always I, forget. Please, by following, please do. <laughs> I always, it's, it's, I always forget to say that. Like, um, like who was it? I think my dad. Like he was like re- he was um listening to the podcast. He's like, you know, you don't even tell people to subscribe. You just do it and leave. And I'm just like, <laughs> well, because like I always had the perspective that you know. As long as I'm reaching whoever is out there too, like I don't really have to advertise it because you know, I always like had this like skewed, I guess not skewed, but like a vision of if I'm like putting more of myself out there into it, then it's not becoming about God, it's becoming about me. And so it's it's a one of the biggest battles I definitely have with the podcast because it's just like, where does the line stop? Like, um, my boyfriend was like, why don't you put your name on the thing? Cause like, it literally just says child of God, like where you would see like someone put like host Janika. Cause I was just like, it don't matter who I am. Does it? I don't think, I mean, I'm pr- there's a lot of people who could be doing a better job than me, but yeah. not- there's a whole other conversation, <laughs> but yeah. So definitely thanks. So thankful for Tamia popping up on the podcast today. All of her information will be in the description box i will definitely make sure of that um and we're just gonna close off in prayer um dear heavenly father we just thank you so much for giving to me the time to share so much valuable information so much valuable encouragement to those who are lost and acknowledging that you are our shepherd going out and looking for them and finding them and bringing them back to the herd dear Lord god i thank you so much for everything that was talked about we pray that the people who need to hear it want to hear it and should hear it hear it dear law god and thank you so much for this day that we get to glorify your name amen i'll see you guys next week next friday with a different guest monday with continuing with numbers and i'll see you guys